is out. So the next thing I gotta do for the engine is get this pulley off the uh, shiv that it's on. So gotta get a puller on there. But look what I got. So yes, finally doing a IFS independent French suspension on a lawnmower. So I'm gonna be using a 150cc, I think it's a Chinese quad of some sort, uh, front end. Pulled off all the parts there. So only thing you're probably saying is the spindles aren't the biggest. This three quarter inch, which is uh, a lot like lawnmowers. This one has, I think, seven eighths, but three quarter inch is the standard. But uh, yes, these will break. And when they break, I'll build better ones. But until then, I'll try running them. They work with the rims and the new tires I got. I uh, ended up cutting a lot of the frame in here out because I'm going to be moving the motor over, taking all the front axle end, and then I'm actually going to be moving the uh, center line of the front axle forward so that I can gain a little bit of wheel uh, base on this build. Super cool about to happen. Some steering geometry. I cut off the side steering. Now it's underneath, so I'll be going over that. But this thing's going to be freaking awesome. This build's starting to come together a lot faster than I thought. This is day three on it, and in reality, it's only day two actually getting some work done on it, and a lot's coming together. So glad I picked up all the parts, the metal. Like, I got everything I need. I just need some time, and that's what I got right now, so that's what I'm going to start doing. I'm going to start busting my balls and getting the motor mount fixed and getting a better uh, spot for the motor to fit, getting that pulley on the motor, and start figuring out the drive, sap drive shaft start figuring out the drive shaft setup. So I'll go over that in a minute because I'm gonna be actually using some much old parts I had that I used on Musty some parts and then I kept the other ones just in case and guess what, it's that day. <laughs> okay, let's get into that, it's gonna be awesome. Well, I think I'm gonna keep that unit for another project. Anyways, front axle is out. Started to clean the frame because uh, wow, it was freaking dirty. I got my A-arm's torn apart and I'm starting to make, you can see some brackets here, and I'm starting to make some mounts on the frame. I'm not going to go extremely crazy because I want to get this build done and I can always perfect it afterwards. The upper A-arm up on the top platform so it will hide right under here and then the bottom one will be just under the frame. So, so that should work out pretty damn good to go up and down, keep the spindle nice and straight. I'll have to replicate that on the other side and uh, yeah, but I think this is going to work out pretty cool. Let's get to it. First, getting these things welded on, or at least tack welded on. Check it out. So Big Tony showed up after his day job doing some work, and he's coming to put some more work in on the new build. So I showed up today thinking this was just gonna be a simple, normal build, nothing crazy. And then this guy, Decides to do independent front suspension. Yeah, like freaking we had the parts laying around. We've been waiting for a good build This one was too narrow and like why not go custom, right? So here it is and like I mean she's just like lightly put in there. We can we can just get these things moving As you can see we got some float in this. I love how trippy that looks because it's just floating there at the right <laughs> spot Now as you guys can see this hood <laughs> it's freaking way up there. So me and Tony were talking that we're going to cut the uh, hood off from this uh, extendo spot that it's at and actually drop this back down all the way to the bottom here so that we lower this whole thing. And then the engine will sit up right here, nice right at the hood, and it'll be decent. Now if we come over to the other side here, while I was doing all this kind of stuff, Tony's been working extremely hard cutting out cardboard and stuff to make <laughs> the uh, running boards. Uh, for these guys. We're making them out of uh, three sheet metal pieces. Story's been uh, getting some metal cut out here. It looks rough right now, but that's just because we just got holes drilled. But I made this simple dimple die here. Nice little laid out piece. And then we're gonna be hole sawing this out with our little hole saw set. Throwing it in the press, dimple dying it through the metal. And then we'll have some nice foot running boards with a little bit of grip because we'll put the dimple dies reverse how they should be. Or a, I don't know, it depends on how you want your dimple dies, but we'll put them up so that your feet kind of have something to grip on. But Tony's been going hard on making these pieces. We've got a few more to cut out. So a normal, so normal lawn tractor is usually 48 inches and we're sitting at, to center, we're at 49 and let's say a quarter. So. We stretched it about an inch and a half, or an inch and a quarter, however you want to look at it. This one just was just shy of four feet, 48 inches, it's like 47 and a half. 
with factory. So if you add one to two inches, three inches, four inches of stretch that you add to your mower can make a huge difference when you're hill climbing and adding some width to your lawnmower can make a huge difference when you're hill climbing if you're on a, uh, an off kilter uh, side angle so you're just on a somewhat off camber spot. Uh, so adding that width will help tremendously along with having wider tires we find out it helps as well but I mean you guys have seen Musty get on quite the angles and I haven't rolled over it's all about where you put your weight. Let's get right back into it Tony and start grinding and cutting up and get some dimple diage going. Yeah let's do it. All right, me and Toe, hard at work. Toe's been uh, drilling out some holes for the dimple die. We just perfected the dimple die. We had to do a bit more lathing to actually get it to work, but we got it to work as it should. I've been working on getting the front metal pieces in here, so the front plates, first two pieces there. So those pieces don't need to be dimple die because those aren't your feet won't ever be there. They'll be back here. That's just for the front. And then we'll have two pieces in the back and then the dimple die pieces in between. So it's coming along great. Me and Tony are working late tonight. Getting it done. So as you can see, you just press that through. Insert that. Toss her in here. As you can see, she's like it like doesn't take much to do it. And we're gonna go right about ah, ah, right about there. Then just like that, if you're not holding it, pops right out, and you got what I would call perfect dimple die for a homemade dimple die. We're doing this side up, so like that's like no imperfections. Unreal. Okay, let's do it. What's this? Hundred more times. <laughs> <laughs> that's it, buddy. Holy! I mean, not too bad compared to one. Once we got it all we'll hammered out. out. Oh, well. Dude, that's so sick, man. I'm so hyped on that. Homemade everything in this shop. So sick. Okay, let's get that welded in and see what it looks like. Alright, as you guys can see, the dimple dies turned out amazing. This adds so much grip for your foot. That's where your foot's going to be, and then the pedal will be right up here, kind of where the dimple die is sitting, but it'll be in the frame, because the clutch that came off the other side, if you can see the original hole, it sat in a good spot, it was just on the wrong side. So we'll just reenact that hole onto this side, and we'll get it all done. Along with that, the front suspension is mocked up. All the brackets are installed. They're just literally just welded in right now. Nothing crazy. There's no supports whatsoever on all of them. It's just one bracket per unit right now. The tops are basically how they're going to be. The bottoms need a front support on this side and then a back support on the rear side. So a few more brackets get made and then they all need to be uh, gusseted and reinforced so that they don't bend or anything. But, I mean, it's coming together. The spindles sit at a pretty decent angle towards each other and I can adjust them with the uh, knobs there. Probably wondering about steering too because uh, well, how the hell do you steer all this stuff? You'll be seeing that soon so I'll be getting to that later but let's get some more uh, reinforcement done maybe even lower the hood down and get it all going but I'm loving this. I know someone's gonna rag on me for this, so I'm just gonna go over it quickly. This spindle may look like it's out of line from that one, but it's just because I haven't tightened in the castle nut here, so if I tighten that up, you can see it actually pulls it in. Figured I'd go over that, just so you guys don't think I'm stupid. Anyways, more reinforcement coming at you right about 